Hey, what's up expats and travelers alike? I'm Josh with Expats Everywhere. Welcome back to the Vertical Community Venture here on our channel. Today we're gonna walk through a house from 1897 and I'm gonna give you guys my take on it. We're gonna see if it fits. Now, if you guys remember in episode five, we took a look at all of the challenges we're having with trying to find a property that will fit what we need. looking to purchase a property that has at least four different units and one of the units needs to have a footprint of at least 100 square meters on a, one single floor. So that is proving to be quite a big challenge for us but we're going to do this uh, when we were away in Lisbon in April shooting some content. We got the call from Nuno and Anna and they told us that there's a property that we need to check out. Nuno did a walkthrough of it and he said uh, you might want to get your eyes on it as well. So that's what we're going to do today. I've walked through this property and I want to give you guys my take on it. Let's see if this thing works for us. All right, we're going to start in the, the basement here. So I've just swung around taking a look at the stairwells down and then we're coming back through the basement. There's this old, uh, this old well pump right here. It's pretty wild. Obviously this basement is not usable at all. Um, it's, it's not in ruins. I mean, the foundation of the house seems quite solid. You don't see a whole lot of signs of moisture, but at current, this basement is not usable. It's not square meters that we can count on. However, I do believe that we would be able to build out this area and have some sort of useful square meters out of it. Here is a partial window, like a half window that's right at street level. So that gives natural light. So we would be able to have a basement there. Now, we've come up the stairs. It's very typical in Portuguese housing where you enter the front door and you do have to go up some stairs to hit the ground floor. Let's take a look at that amazingly sculpted ceiling. One of the craziest things about this property is that I've worked on some old houses, I've been in some old houses, but the smell in this place, guys, it was absolutely terrible. This place is in pretty rough condition. Now. It has beautiful ceilings, which might be really, really expensive to, to be redone. We're taking a look at the front right room, and then now we're working our way back through the hallway. This area right here is what we believe to be one of the original doors. Uh, it is uh, glass that has been etched. This right here is hand-painted faux marble, which would be ridiculously expensive to uh, both save and repair so that's not really an option uh, this is an entrance into another room this is a house right now so it's a house for an elderly couple they've had it for many many years it's been passed down in the family from what we know uh, but this is the other room that is on the ground floor so this is going to be access out to the street level i'm going to take a peek here outside real quick and then come back through again you can see the sculpted ceilings this is a feature that we find in a lot of these old buildings and it's one honestly that we're looking for we want to keep if you guys haven't noticed the ceiling height is is crazy tall it's over 10 meters tall and there's just a lot of junk there's a lot of junk uh cluttering the space it's not very clean so here we have another open space. This is kind of being used uh, as storage or a pantry. Here's the kitchen in very rough shape. Uh, everything is old in there. These tiles look to be original. They're in pretty good condition. Absolutely gorgeous. Surely hand-painted, handcrafted. Now we step outside onto what is uh, kind of the, the terrace bal balcony area that leads into one of the largest backyards that I think I've ever seen in a city. We've got a balcony above. So you see that there is that outdoor space that we're looking for, uh, which is amazing. This is what makes this property phenomenal. Obviously not the jungle we're looking at, but the potential in that jungle that we're looking at. Down below is access to the basement. So access to that, uh, that cave or cellar um, is, is pretty crucial because that means that we have usable square meters that, that we 
have access to pretty naturally and it would be possible to expand the size of the actual living quarters in the property. Or we could just use it as some sort of mutual space. Now, we see some significant damage uh, due to water in the ceilings. Another very interesting space here upstairs. Just the wear and tear that's happened in this property is, is remarkable. Now, some of the floors are in, in quite good condition considering the age of the property, but in general, I think we're looking at having to replace the floors as well, which that's not cheap if you're talking about using uh, a high quality hardwood. All right, now, one of the most stunning features of this property is definitely the staircase. The downside to this staircase is the fact that it is so large and taking up so much space in the actual property itself. So it's not going to be livable square meters, right? When the properties get divided up, it, it basically shrinks the amount of usable square meters that we have. But nonetheless, it is a beautiful feature of the property and one that not only would we be required to keep, we would want to keep. We would not want to purchase a building like this and, and damage that feature. We also have the dome here to let in light. And as you can see, there was uh, definitely some water damage that took place there. Now here are the two small balconies facing the front. And then quite a large living space, as well as again, the sculpted ceilings, which it, it's going to be pricey to get those molds fixed. Stepping out onto the balcony feels sturdy. It's, uh, yeah, I don't think that there's any real structural problems with this house. Obviously, we'll want to get that checked, but very certain that, uh, that it's a solid place. If it's been standing since 1897, I don't think that we're gonna have too many issues uh, that pop up for us when it comes to the, the foundation and structure of the place. Now, the roof needs some work. Obviously, you guys see just the immense amount of stuff that they have. Like, this couple's in their 90s. They've acquired a lot of things over the years, and this is where they store it. I believe that they only live in maybe two or three rooms in the house. I mean, the kitchen is used, uh, there's a bedroom, that looks used and then the rest is just boxes of, of clothing and, and just things. It's remarkable. Now this is an access to another room that is, is not visible from the street but it is essentially the second floor. This is where things can get interesting for us is because we would have to figure out would it be possible to raise this building by another floor completely or possibly raise it by another floor and a half. Because if we can do that, this deal makes a lot of sense in terms of how big it is. The footprint is 117 square meters, so it meets the requirement that, that we have. We don't know exactly how much we're gonna lose in terms of square meters uh, from the staircase, but there's a lot of possibilities with this place seeing how the footprint is so large. So this is kind of the, the little attic space that we're looking at. These stairs are very, very narrow. Uh, it was not easy f for me to get up and down being uh, six foot. So I don't know how much that could be adjusted in that area, but I think we should try, right? Or, or at least give it a think. So beautiful staircase right here. Again, we're getting another shot of that and a few more shots of the rooms here again on the first floor. This is the first floor. Again, significant damage. You guys can see the wallpapers peeling off, a lot of trinkets and stuff. It was so hard to get an idea of how big the space was between getting an idea of how big the space was and the smell in this place like occupying my mind it was, uh, it was tricky. I'm actually glad I got this footage so I can go back and look at uh, and not have to smell it. Glad there's no smell-o-vision yet. All right, so here is a south-facing balcony 
looking out over the garden. Uh, really, really pretty uh, and unique feature that this is going to have. And uh, here's a shot through to where the, the plumbing column is. In many of these old houses, there is a, like a plumbing stack. So in the back of the house is, is where the duty was done. And, and there's just a column or a stack that all the plumbing gets run. So it's not uncommon to find bathrooms in the back of older Portuguese properties. Very common. Getting a close up on you know, the moisture damage that's happened in, in the railing. You guys can see it's warped. And uh, as we come back down, you can also check out the floor, just how weathered and worn it is. So here's the thing with a property like this. It is really difficult to, on your own, get an idea of, of the scope of project. So we now know what we have to do. We have to get an architect in here to figure out how will the units be fit and also how much it's gonna cost. So we have to balance those two things. Well, one, we have to know that our units fit, but we also have to make sure that the budget doesn't go over the total projected cost of this whole project. If we can fit an additional unit or two in this property, then that could seal the deal for us because I think that we would have enough to meet the asking price of the owners. Now, the asking price of the owners is astronomical. The asking price of the owners is 800,000 euros for this place. I mean, that kind of comes out to around 22, 2400 euros per square meter, which is bonkers considering that this place needs to be fully renovated. So if you guys want to know how that turned out, when that video is ready, we're going to post it right here. If you want to get caught up on the rest of this series, you can start right here and check that playlist out. Now, I'm Josh. This has been the Vertical Community Venture at Expats Everywhere. Now, let's get moving. Bye.